This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a good day. Amen. We're going to have Minister Day come with the morning prayer. All right. All right. Then the choir is going to come with a selection. And our responsive reading will come from number 578 uh, in, in the back of the hymnals. So if Minister Day would come with the morning prayer, let us stand together as she prays. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for all the things that you have done for us and yet doing the things for us now. We thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning with a mind to come this way to serve you and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, because it didn't have to be this way, but you made a way for us when we didn't even see the way. Yes, Father. And God, we just say thank you. Thank, thank, you, you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, all your benefits and your blessings that yes. you bestow upon your people. Yes. And Father, we just say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God, we ask now that you forgive us of our sins. Anything that we might have said or done that's not pleasing to you, we ask God that you will forgive us. Show us what we need to do, God, and what we should do. that you would bless us as we come into the further parts of this service. That we will hear something, Lord. Say something, Lord. Feel the spirit of the Lord, God. We just thank you, Lord. Bless us now as we come to this part of the service, God. That we will give you praise and honor. Bless the pastor as he comes, Lord. Yeah. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, let us take what he brings to us because it comes from the Lord, yes. which made heaven and earth. Yes. Bless this choir, Lord. Yes. Continue to just give us some words yes. that will be pleasing to you to sing the praises of God. Yes, and we thank you. God bless us as we go into the further parts of this service. That we will receive that that you would have us to receive them today. Yes. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For all of your thank blessings, you. Lord. We thank you. Thank you. you. Bless us now as we go through the further parts of this service. That you would get all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The choir will come with one selection, then we'll do 573. The title of the song is, I'll go if I have to go by myself. Listen to these words.
number 578. It's entitled Spiritual Warfare. It comes to us from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 and Romans 13, 12 through 14. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in clamoring or wantonness, not in strife and envying altogether. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Now we'll have our announcements by Sister Charlotte Timberlake. Good morning. Do we have any visitors here with us today? If so, would you please stand? If there are visitors, on behalf of Reverend Wayne Johnson and the Siloam Missionary Baptist Church family, we extend a heartfelt welcome to you, and we hope you come back and worship with us again. Heartfelt sympathy goes out to the family of Mr. Calvin Blackwell, son of the late Willie and Lorraine Blackwell, and the brother of Sinetra Blackwell. Please keep the family in your thoughts and prayers and funeral arrangements are incomplete at this time. Let us remember our sick and shut in members and keep them in your prayers. The announcements are as follows. There will be a deacon and trustee meeting today immediately after service in the basement. And the Voices of Salon will have rehearsal today immediately after service. From inside your bulletin, budget committee meeting will be Saturday, October 7th, 11 a.m. Budget committee requisition forms are available in the vestibule. Each auxiliary should submit their itemized budget request by today. And please give those to Charles Waller or Sharon Donnell. The next Zoom Bible study will be held on Wednesday, October 13th at 7 p.m. Homecoming will be held on Sunday, October 22nd at 11 a.m. Following the service, we will continue the celebration and fellowship at the Homestead Steakhouse where we will gather for a Dutch treat lunch. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday from last Monday through today? If so, would you please stand? Birthday and anniversary. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, everybody. Happy anniversary to you. And may God continue to guide and bless you. 
our thought for today. In order for a pastor to fulfill the Lord's command to feed God's flock, the sheep must show up during feeding times. Amen. This will conclude the announcements for this morning. Thank you. Thank you for those announcements. We pray you govern yourselves accordingly. Um, I was just thinking I love to pick at my wife at different times, and she's not one to be picked at. <laughs> but I, I said, well, if I can't pick at you, who am I going to pick at? You know. But uh, it's been 46 years, and uh, the last time I told she said something to me, I said, well, you know, if you ever watched that movie, Shawshank Redemption, uh -huh. when those guys had pulled long times in the prison, uh -huh. they weren't used to anything else. So they went back to prison. I, I was basically trying to tell her, right now, the way the world is, I don't want to be out there by myself. Because it's crazy out there. So I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, it's, she's been a blessing to me and to her whole family. So, so we're just happy to um, just celebrate together. Um, and uh, so we're, we're hoping for many more. And uh, it, it takes a lot of give and take. That's right. Yeah. You know, That's you, right. you just, just can't go in thinking you're going to have everything your way, your way. Right. all the time. Right. It takes give and take. The choir is going to come with a pre message song. For those who'd like to get to the scripture early, we're going to Judges chapter 2. We've been so involved in the Sunday school lesson with the book of Judges. This morning was about Gideon. But I want to go back and talk about Joshua. Get uh, Judges chapter 2, verses 6, 7, and 8, and 10. 6, 7, 8, and 10. And for a subject, bring up your children knowing God. Bring up your children knowing God. Amen? All right. The choir is going to come with that pre-message song. The title of the song is Trouble in My Way. Listen to these words. A trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry. Yeah. 
will fix it after a while. Judges chapter 2, starting at verse 7. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his heritage to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being a hundred and ten years old. Verse 10. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Father, I stand before your people again. I pray that your spirit would fill me with this word that I might be able to tell them about you in such a way that it will spread and bring them into an understanding of you. Bless us now as we look at this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bring up your children knowing God. With the current events that's going on in our nation where our people are not being taught our history, we must take it upon ourselves to make sure that our history doesn't die with us. Amen. We can use this Bible as an example to us of what happens when people forget their past. You know, in Florida, they're trying to pass laws that you can't speak about black history in certain ways. That slavery benefited us instead of it was a hindrance to us. But as I look back in these words from the book of Judges, it made me think about what was happening at that time and how it compares to what's going on now. God would send someone to bring the children of Israel out of their trouble. He sent Moses into Egypt to bring them out of Egypt. When Moses' time was up, there was Joshua right then, right there, able to take them on into the promised land. But one of the things God told them when they were getting ready to go into the promised land was to get rid of all of the people there and their false gods. Why is it that man thinks that he can add to what God says? Come to find out they didn't do it. They went in, they got rid of some of the people, but then they kept a lot of the people there. Do you know why? Because they thought, well, we can use them as our servants. But see, when you allow someone to stay who God had said, put them out, it brings about conflict. Because those who remain still worship their gods. And that was the main reason why God didn't want them there. And it became a hindrance to the children of Israel. Because every time they would get the opportunity they would worship with those people who they were supposed to have destroyed. That's right. And God said, because you did not get rid of them, I'm going to use them to test you. Mm. I'm going to see if you really follow me or you follow anybody. And throughout Israel's history, whenever they got away from worshiping God, they went to worship other gods. Mm. Now here, it happens in these verses of scripture that Joshua took direct control after Moses died. So they had that continuance of someone who knew God. And it says that even that generation that would, would came through the, the 40 years in the, in the desert, that those elders understood what God had done for them. Mm. Yes. 
Amen. But see, it made me think about it. We have stopped allowing our children to go through tough times Amen. because we want it better for them. Amen. But God allowed this to happen with the children of Israel and they forgot who God was because those elders remembered all the struggles they went through and how God would come and deliver them. But that generation that came up didn't remember Moses. They didn't remember Joshua. So they didn't remember God. And they went out a whoring after other gods. And it's gonna be the same way with us if we don't bring up our children knowing the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. We've already ha had a couple of generations come through who left the church, don't know nothing about God, and they have raised their children outside the church so that they don't know God. So the influence will come from outside of the will of God. And we wonder why there are shootings almost every night in Durham. Every night in Charlotte. You know, we don't leave Roxburgh out. There's been a few over here. Because they don't value life anymore. And it's because they don't know God. Because where God is, there's life. Even in these verses of scripture, it said something about truth. And we live in a time now where people don't know the truth. They will tell you a lie to your face. Amen. I just saw a man did, did a video, said he was a limo driver, and he got the opportunity to drive Mr. Trump through New York. And said, Trump said, let me give you a little business advice. Said, you're driving this limo for a company. Said, what you need to do is pass out your own little personal car to all the passengers and let them know that you would do it outside the business that you're working for. And the man said, well, that would be cheating. He said, Mr. Trump said, that's what business is about. It's about lying, stealing, and cheating. He said he took him over into a neighborhood and told him to get out. And he said, why? He said, because you said lying, stealing, and cheating, so I'm putting you out. Think about what's going on now. Those people that we all hold up on pedestals will do anything in the book to get ahead. Amen. They don't have a standard because they don't know God. Amen. They will tell you one thing and do another behind your back. Amen. Right now, we've got people who have been working at home over the internet, been making good money. Now the company's saying, come on back in because we want to keep an eye on you. Don't you know they got an eye on you with that computer? They know every keystroke you do. So if it's really about being, uh, knowing what you're doing, they already know what you're doing. It's about control. And that's what the world is about. It's about controlling the people. Being able to tell them to do this and to do that. But we are born to be free. Jesus died that we might be free. And if we look at the scripture and we look at all of the judges that God sent to set his people free, it came, they came when the people realized that they had gotten away from from the God of Israel. Mm, that's right. And when they cried out, God said, well, I'll send someone to deliver them. Mm. Now, isn't that a gracious and merciful God Amen. that Amen. for generations, they go through and neglect him. But when they call on his name, he said, I'll send someone. Mm. We look at what we go through and we see people who stay away from the church don't want to have nothing to do with you. But in the time of trouble, All right. here they come calling. Yes, Can you pray for me? Right. And we are obligated Amen. to pray. Yes, but they need to know 
It's not because I get, I'm better than you. It's because I serve a God that loves you just like he loves me. Amen. And he wants you to come back to him. Amen. And in coming back to him, that means you understand that there are some things that God wants from you. That's right. He wants to be part of your life. Yes. He wants you to be able to stand and tell others about him. Yes. Now, for us who have children, we need to be sure that we tell them what God has done for us. Amen. But see, but in order to tell them what God has done for us, we've got to admit to our faults. Amen. 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 Say, I've been young. Amen. And I did some foolish things. Amen. But now I'm old. Amen. And I've seen what God has done. Yes. I understand that I could have been dead a long time ago. Yes. But it was grace and mercy. Yes. That kept me here. Yes. And now that I'm here, I'm here to tell you yes. that God is able yes. to keep you. Yes. Our young people have got to know that God loves them. Mm -hmm. You know, we're living in this world now where everything is about how I look, what I own, mm -hmm. and whatever. But don't you know all of that stuff is just temporal? That's right. That's right. All, of, all of this stuff, right. we're going to leave here. Yes. You, can, you can be the wealthiest man in the world and put your name on four or five buildings. But one day, somebody's going to walk by that building and say, it says Johnson. And say, I don't know no Johnsons. <laughs> that name is not going to mean a thing to them. Just like they forgot Joshua. Mm -hmm. The Sunday school lesson I told them, they forgot Gideon. He was one of the judges they sent to get them to fight the Midians. They forgot Gideon. And as soon as they forget what God has brought them through, they turn to other gods. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, those other gods never did anything for them. Ah, that's right. <laughs> Check the track record. What have they done for you? You know. With all the money in the world, you can't buy your health. All your money, all this money in the world, you can't buy all the houses. There, there, there are things that you can do that can please this flesh. But it doesn't please God. And we've got to have a more focused life on what's beyond just what's here. You know, I look at my mother-in-law who's, what, 95? 94. 94, get that right. She's been here 94 years. I don't know how long she's gonna be with us, but God has blessed her to be here till 94. Amen. Um, Helen's cousin's uh, husband's uh, aunt just celebrated her 101, was on WTVD. You don't know how long you're going to be here and what God's purpose for you might be. He might be keeping them here to humble us. How you treat them. How you love them. You don't know what God does with what he gives us. You don't know, that might be his special gift to you because he knows that you can't handle it right now. But I'll hold him here for a little while longer while I strengthen you. So you don't know what kind of blessing God has in store for you. But you got to remember him. You can't go running after other gods. Money, sex, fame, all of that fades away. I was watching the news this morning and they were talking about Beyonce. They were talking about the uh, other girls, Taylor Swift, and all the money that they're making. And I'm thinking, but well, they can only spend a dollar at a time. You can have all that money. They promote this lottery 
Now they say it's up to $1.7 billion. And people are running in to buy tickets. If you, if you got a hold of that, after the government takes half, what you gonna do? You're gonna have more family than you ever knew. I'm gonna be kidding to you too. You're gonna have, you're gonna have people come that you never knew. Saying, can, can you give me a little something? But do you want that? I want to be able to bless somebody. I want to be able to fund something that's gonna help somebody along the way. I told my wife, I said, well, you know, if I, if I hit that lottery, if I played the numbers and hit that lottery, first thing I do is give uh, the children's hospital, test hospital, they always advertise them, I give them a million. I said, I got, I got a number of places, I'll just give it away. But see, that's me. I don't think everybody thinks the same way I think. But I want people to be of the same heart as I am. That we love God enough not to look at everything as just for me. But it's for the blessing of people around us. If, if, if we were to look at our friends and neighbors and say, what do you need? I've got a little extra this month. I can help you out this month. That would be a blessing. But, you, but the thing is, be sure you say, in the name of Jesus, I give it to you. Because I want him to have all the credit. You know, we found out in the Sunday school lesson this morning that Gideon made a mistake. He took the gold earrings from the, the enemies that they had and he made an ephod, which is the outer garment for a priest, made it of gold, hung it in his hometown, and people started coming to it instead of going to God. And I told him then, I said, you gotta be aware of what you do will cause somebody else to sin. You've got to be willing to say, no, no, I, I, won't, I won't stand here and take credit for anything that God has done. Because man will do it. Man will say, oh yeah, I, I, I've done this and I've done that. If God didn't want you to have it, he, he, he wouldn't allow you to do it. So why not give him the praise? But we got to bring up our children knowing God. Because just like these children of Israel, after Joshua died, they went after other gods. Think about it now, a whole generation. Say y'all are a generation. I, I see one, maybe two young people in here. So this generation passes away. Who have we got to step in our place? to carry on the work, to follow after God. It's on each of us to tell our young people, this is what I know about God. Amen. This is what he did in my life. And this is what you need to know in order to grow in God. Because there are gonna be all types of gods out there, but none of them can do what my God can do. You'll only be fooled. Fame, fortune will all pass away. But what your connection with God is what will carry you through. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Bring up your children knowing God. The choir is going to come with a final selection. And we'll come back with the benediction. The title of the song is Show Me the Way.
for. I said, Lord, no, I haven't been good all of my life. You know, in my life, I had many things to happen. I've been up to, Lord, 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 no. I know I've been down, no. this amount of privilege I ask you to keep our sick and shut in in your prayers remember Zanetta and her brother in their time of loss remember those around you that may be struggling right now um, they may not say anything but you probably can see it you know and be that light to them be that light let us stand together and be dismissed. Father, it's in the precious name of Jesus that we come at the close of another service. We pray now that you would go with these, your people, that you would lead and guide them. Show them the way. That they might be the light to the world. That they are true believers of you, Father. And they love one another that the world might see your love in them. Bless them now and keep them. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. <laughs>